saved it. Limpets thrive in this environment. Um, rocky reef type area, lots of seaweed. So you have to sneak up on these things, clip them off the rock before they know you're there, otherwise they'll clamp down. They're really hard to get off without breaking the shell, which we're totally trying to avoid. So if you spook one of these things and you're having a hard time getting off, just go to the next one. Don't break the shell because otherwise it's just gonna kill it. So these are limpets, a type of sea snail, similar to an abalone. They're native here to this reef in Port Orford uh, on the southern Oregon coast. Um, we think that these are a great alternative to abalone. We use them in our restaurant, Arizo. This is gonna have a little bit more mild flavor than abalone, because abalone is much larger, it's much older. Um, it definitely has more of the seaweed flavor of what it eats, uh, mainly because it's feeding so much on kelp. Whereas this snail uh, kind of feeds on finer algae and moss that grows on the rocks. So it doesn't have nearly as profound of a taste as abalone does, that really desirable umami flavor. But it does have, it does have that flavor, just a lot more mild. We just try to take them in moderation, keep that in mind, um, and also not try not to take everything out of one stand. So usually this area where you see a patch of them is called a stand of limpets, um, and we just try to take you know a few of the larger ones and leave the majority of them there so we don't wipe out a whole rock. So here we have uh, one of the limpets that we harvested. Um, as you can see, this is the underside. This is the, the shell that you'll see uh, attached to the rock. And then this here is the foot of the snail. Um, this is what it uses to attach, suction on, protect itself from predators. Um, like I was saying, you have to sneak up on these things because this foot is really strong and it'll just suction onto the rock and make it really hard to harvest. And then here in the front is the mouth. Um, that it has a kind of a little beak in there that it uses or a tooth to scrape the moss off the rock. And uh, it's kind of been said that that substance um, that the tooth is made of is actually almost as hard as a diamond or even harder in some cases. And then underneath the foot is the liver, um, which is one of the most delicious parts because it's filled with kind of that seaweed that it eats. Uh, very similar to an abalone, the liver is uh, a delicacy and considered like the best part of the abalone by a lot of aficionados. So if you harvest these, um, you're gonna wanna put them in a container inside of a cooler, like a little plastic container in ice, and with a loose fitting lid, don't cut the oxygen off. And, uh, and don't you know, get them too cold, that's why we put them in a container. Don't bury them in ice, um, because they will die almost immediately. Um, any kind of clam or oyster or things like that, burying them in ice is kind of like a, is a myth. Uh, so try to think about the temperature of this water, it's like 45, 50 degrees kind of, you know, maybe an ice block in the cooler with the rest of the stuff. Um, and they'll stay alive for uh, several days in that in that fashion. We're just gonna take, uh, you know, about a dozen or so of the larger specimens, and we're gonna leave most of everything else. So harvest these in a manner of an idea that you're gonna serve them as an appetizer, essentially, rather than a main course, because of the yield that you're gonna get off of them, and also because of just how long this species does take to grow.
All right, so we're uh, set up here on the beach at Port Orford Heads. Um, we have a small fire going here, uh, just some lump charcoal, a um, little grill grate, our limpets that we picked earlier. They're still alive, um, still moving, perfect condition. Oh, we're just gonna wipe them gently clean. So we just have uh, some grapeseed oil that we're gonna use to brush on the limpet. It's gonna help with caramelization. Now I'm just gonna use my finger, just because the shape is a little bit strange of the limpet, so this is gonna be the most effective tool. Just make sure that it's evenly coated over the surface. That's all we're looking for, no excess oil. So I'll just um, blot them dry afterwards. You just want the thinnest possible coating of oil that you can, so just to avoid any flare-ups on the grill. And then we're just gonna go straight over hottest part of the fire, meat side down. And this is cooked really quick, so just do a couple at a time, whatever you're comfortable with. And we're just gonna let them go for about 30 seconds here. You can really smell them, start to cook, um, start to caramelize. Obviously don't wanna let them get too dark, just kinda gauge how hot it is. We're just gonna let them go over here. So as you can see, just a little bit of golden around the edge. You're not going for anything too crazy. We're gonna flip it over here just for a second. As soon as this liquid underneath just starts to bubble, as you can see right there, they're just uh, that limpet is done. That's how fast they cook. So another key to being able to tell that the limpet is done is just sort of touching the foot here, and it should be completely separated from the bottom of the shell. I've completely disconnected, retracted back, and sort of firmed up. We just um, experimented with them after we started harvesting for the first time, trying to figure out what the best way to cook them was, but there is a similar method to cooking abalone like this. Yeah, there's a way that you can grill abalone in the shell. I mean, it's a very indigenous cooking method, grilling, so I wouldn't attribute it to anybody, but it's uh, you know something that has been done by Native Americans for a very long time. Uh, abalone is one of the first foods of some of the uh, coastal Native Americans. We're just you know trying to find the simplest ways of preparing these that's gonna extract the most natural flavor from it and sort of highlight that ingredient and not really do too much, no excess, no frills, no elaborate preparations or excessive ingredients that are gonna take away from this thing uh, because it's just so delicious and beautiful on its own. We really don't wanna mess with it at all, just kind of let the flavor speak for itself, the natural cooking method. So now we just have our mustard seed oil here that we're gonna finish right over the top. This kind of has a wasabi flavor. Uh, it goes really nice with the brininess of this limpet. And then after the oil, we just have a little bit of flake sea salt made in Neatarts Bay right on top, and that completes the dish. One of the biggest issues that the California and Oregon coast are facing is the decimation of the kelp forests due to uh, overpopulation of purple sea urchin. So essentially when the kelp got wiped out, the abalone lost their main food source. And the abalone in California has literally disappeared and it's starting to, this issue is creeping up and it's already in Oregon and we're already starting to see less and less. We're kind of just trying to shine a spotlight on this alternative species that can be harvested. If you're out here at the coast, 